Toronto Police wants to charge Toronto Pride 150% more for paid duty officers than they paid last year. The University of Waterloo is offering tuition fee waivers for any member of the traditional lands on which the university is located. Canada's banks only made like $5 billion in three months. And Lula's environmental and indigenous ministries in Brazil are under attack by conservative lawmakers. Good morning. It's Friday, May 26th. I'm Nora, and here are your headlines. Toronto Pride, the group that manages the Pride Festival in Toronto and its massive parade, has said that it might need to cut programming to pay for higher fees for insurance and cops. The events are just in a few weeks. The cost of insurance has increased by 300% to total $278,000, and the cost of cops has increased 150% to $168,000. Recall that for many years, Black Lives Matter fought against Pride Toronto for welcoming police in the parade. There was always a lot of tension and quiet threats of backlash by the police for how Pride Toronto was interacting with them. It's hard to see these numbers without thinking of this history. Toronto Pride right now says that paid duty officers would be present to apparently help keep order. Sherwin Modest from Pride Toronto said that the police are necessary because of a rise in hatred towards queer and trans people. But Toronto police said that the increased costs aren't actually related to anyone's security. It's because the event is so big. Now, I'm very confused by this story. As someone who organizes large public events in a different city, police are usually present whether or not we want them to be there. We don't pay to have police shut down roads if there's a rally or a parade. That's just part of their job. They usually contact us, ask us about how big and complex our events are, and then they do all the dispatching and coordination on their own. We don't get a bill after for all of that. It, it seems hella weird that a citizens group would be on the hook to pay for a public service that is supposed to, you know, do exactly this kind of thing. CBC's Sean Jeffords doesn't get into any of this at all. He looks into the increased insurance costs by asking a professor what he thinks, who says that, yes, insurance costs have been rising, but this whole police situation is left as being something that is very normal. It's apparently normal for the police to fundraise off of events like Pride. Now, I know a lot about crowd control and crowd management, and I also know a lot about de-escalation and keeping people safe. Pride Toronto would do itself infinite favors if they hired a few activists to coordinate martial training and invest in a set of walkie-talkies rather than agree to pay the police anything. They'll be there no matter what. There's no need to also agree to extortion. Next, to a press release from the University of Waterloo. The university has announced that it will give all, quote, qualifying students from two First Nations communities on whose traditional territory the university is situated, unquote, free tuition. It's, I think, the first initiative like it of its kind. The University of Waterloo is near to the Grand River. The Haldeman Tract promised six miles on either side of the Grand River to Mohawk people as a thank you for fighting alongside the British during the American Revolution. But that treaty was never respected, and slowly the Haldeman Tract was mostly carved up and sold off or given off to settlers. The University of Waterloo says that this will cover current and all incoming students who are members of the Six Nations of the Grand and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. They also promise this, to charge domestic tuition fees for Indigenous students from elsewhere in Canada, which isn't exactly a bargain, that's already how this works, but also from the United States. That's a much bigger deal, as American Indigenous students would normally be charged international student fees. The university has also dropped the application fee for Inuit, Métis, and First Nations students. Here's what it says in the press release. 
quote, this landmark decision to increase access to education is in direct response to the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and its calls to action, unquote, says Jean Becker, Associate Vice President, Indigenous Relations at Waterloo. Quote, I believe Waterloo is the first university in Canada to waive tuition in full for members of specific First Nations communities, and I hope this demonstrated leadership will inspire other post-secondary institutions to take similar steps, unquote. I know universities too well to know that there must be a catch, but I don't yet know what that catch might be. Maybe there's no catch. That would be a surprise. This is a really great move, and I hope other institutions will copy it, of course, in consultation and coordination and leadership with their own Indigenous decision-making bodies. Next, remember the story I mentioned a few days ago about how Canadians collectively owe more than Canada's GDP? Well, here's the other side to that coin. Second quarter earnings are out from the big five banks in Canada. The Globe and Mail reported that the banks, quote, fell short of analysts' expectations, unquote. It takes like five paragraphs to actually get to the numbers in Stephanie Moroda's piece in the Globe and Mail. The Bank of Montreal made $1.6 billion in the past three months. That was down from last year at this time when they made $4.76 billion. And so, yes, only profit of $1.06 billion. I hear some shareholders cried. Next, Scotiabank made it $2.16 billion in three months. That is ever so slightly down from last year in quarter two when they made $2.75 billion. CIBC made $1.69 billion in quarter two alone. This is up from last year when they made $1.52 billion. CIBC executives are still hung over from the very expensive drugs they took when they announced this to shareholders. I hear. And the Royal Bank, they made $3.6 billion, which was down from last year's quarter to results. Those results were 4.25. Remember, these figures are billions, billions, billions of dollars. Billions are huge numbers. The banks have so much room between billions of dollars in profits and actual losses, but you would never know that reading how mainstream media reports on bank profits. You also never hear about how this is made possible through the record-breaking amounts of debt that Canadians hold, and just how much of our money is eaten away by the institutions that claim to hold it for us. And finally, to Brazil. The Guardian is reporting that Brazil's conservative-dominated Congress moved to weaken the Ministry of Environmental Affairs and the newly created Ministry for Indigenous Peoples. Both were promises made by President Lula da Silva during the election. The vote happened at a congressional committee where, at 15 votes to three, members agreed to strip draft legislation of a rural environmental registry. A registry is needed to track illegal deforestation, land grabbing, and illegal water theft. The committee also took the responsibility of the Ministry for Indigenous Peoples to delimit Indigenous territories and give that power to the Ministry of Justice. And it isn't just that. They also made moves that directly threaten Indigenous land claims. Here's what The Guardian reports, quote, in a separate move, the lower house also approved plans for an imminent vote on legislation which activists fear will annul all indigenous claims to land indigenous peoples were not physically inhabiting when Brazil's constitution came into force in 1988. Brazil's Minister of Indigenous Affairs, Sonia Guajajara, called the maneuver genocidal and an attack on indigenous rights, territories and the fight against climate change, unquote. Climate justice groups condemned the committee's decision. The Guardian reports that Lula might be considering legal challenges to the changes. Those are your headlines for Friday, May 26th. I hope that you've got beautiful weather coming towards your way this weekend, whether that means less smoke in the air or a beautiful sunny park afternoon. I certainly think I have that in my uh, near future. And so enjoy the weekend. I hope you get a couple of days or a couple of hours off at least. And I'll talk to you on the other side.